On today's show, some Tesla Model S and Tesla Model X owners are reporting a range drop after a recent software update. We're going to tell you why. Florida does away with Florida man behind the wheel and okays fully self-driving vehicles instead. And Simone Gertz gets fed up waiting for the Tesla pickup, so she makes her own. These stories and more coming right next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We are 100% Kiwi and 50% community owned. Why not switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup in the world of clean energy and transportation. I am super happy that you're joining me. Some owners of older Tesla Model S and Model X cars are reporting a noticeable drop in their car's range per charge following a recent over-the-air software update. At the moment, the issue seems to only be affecting Teslas fitted with 85 kilowatt hour battery packs, and not all vehicles with that pack capacity appear to be affected. The drop in range, more than standard degradation can account for, is concerning some owners. But Tesla says the update is to protect the battery pack and improve its longevity. In Tesla's defense, I should note it's not the first automaker to do this. Similar drops in ranges after firmware updates have affected other electric cars too. Renault Nissan have officially signed a deal with Waymo to work together on autonomous taxi and rideshare programs in both France and Japan. While both Renault and Nissan already have pilot autonomous vehicle rideshare services underway in both countries, their collaborative experience is pretty small in comparison with Waymo, which now claims that it's got more than 10 million miles driven on public roads. The resulting deal will see Renault Nissan create new mobility companies in both countries devoted exclusively to autonomous vehicle services. Peugeot has officially begun taking orders for the E208 electric hatchback in parts of Europe, with the entry-level active E208 starting from just €30,450 before incentives, but including a 19% purchase tax. That's far less than the price of the 40 kilowatt hour Nissan Leaf, despite the fact that the E208 features a larger 50 kilowatt hour battery pack and 100 kilowatt CCS quick charging. At this kind of price, while more expensive than its gasoline sibling, the E208 is going to be quite a compelling car if it drives as well as the spec sheet looks. Renault officially unveiled the new next generation Zoe this week. It's got a 52 kilowatt hour battery pack, 50 kilowatt hours of which is usable, a WLTP test range of up to 390 kilometers per charge, and 50 kilowatt CCS DC quick charging alongside a 22 kilowatt AC quick charging capability. Outside, the car looks very similar to its predecessor, but inside, there's a much improved interior, along with a bunch of new driver assistance features, a new infotainment system, and dramatically improved smartphone connectivity. Pricing has yet to be announced. Volkswagen hasn't quite yet unveiled its ID3, but it wants you to know that all of its ID brand cars will be coming with a battery capacity warranty that it says means that you won't have to worry. The reality is that the warranty, which ensures a capacity of 70% or better for eight years or 160,000 kilometers, is pretty standard across the electric car world. While Volkswagen doesn't have the same experience with electric vehicles as some companies, it does say it's confident that the batteries will last the lifetime of the cars they are in, or much longer. Florida might not be the first place you'd think of when talking about self-driving cars, but this week, Governor Ron DeSantis signed into law a bill that makes it legal for autonomous vehicles to be driven on the state's roads without a backup driver. It's the third state after Texas and Michigan to allow such a rule. Florida's legislation requires autonomous vehicles operating without a human to be capable of safely pulling over to the side of the road and turning on their hazard warning lights in the event of an unexpected emergency. Operators need to have pretty big insurance policies as well. The same week as it shared pricing for the E208, 
Peugeot has revealed the Peugeot 2008 SUV and E2008 SUV. The latest incarnation of the popular SUV will be offered with a choice of drivetrains, including electric, when it goes on sale next year. The electric variant will offer 100 kW CCS quick charging capabilities, as well as a 50 kWh battery pack. There's going to be an estimated range of 310 km per charge. Pricing and further specs are expected to be released in the coming months. Renault may be focusing on electric vehicles in parts of the world, but in other markets it's been continuing to focus on diesel vehicles instead, especially in markets where lower purchase costs are put higher than environmental concerns. This week, however, it's announced that it's going to completely stop making and selling diesel engine cars in India by 2020. Instead, it seeks to establish local electric vehicle manufacturing there by 2022. It's good to see Renault finally dump diesel at last in a country that's working really hard to change its air quality and reduce its pollution. Drive bigger. That's the message from Volkswagen, which is executing a massive change in its advertising strategy as part of its goal to rebrand itself as an electric automaker. And rather than shy away from its past, it's making it the center point in at least one of its new ads. This one, called Hello Light, uses sound bites from Dieselgate coverage, but shows a Volkswagen designer trying to recapture the spirit and joy of Volkswagen heydays in the 50s and 60s. The message? The old Volkswagen is gone and a cleaner, kinder one is in its place. This year, we've seen the UK break all kinds of records for renewable energy generation and go for months without any use of coal on the national grid. In the US, things haven't been so great. I mean, the EPA has just finalised a plan to try and roll back legislation that would have shut down some coal plants. And President Trump, of course, is a known fan of what he likes to call, quote, beautiful clean coal. This week, however, the renewable energy world had the last laugh when the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission confirmed that renewable energy generating capacity in the US is now larger than coal's. Sure, it's only about one-fifth of total power generation, but it's a perfect take that to coal. And finally, Tesla has long been promising us a pickup. Even last week, Elon Musk told us how we'd all love the new cyberpunk-themed pickup when it's revealed later this year. But that's ages away. So why not make your own? <laughs> that's exactly what YouTuber and self-proclaimed queen of shitty robots Simone Gertz did this week, taking a brand new Tesla Model 3 standard range and um, modifying it. Not only is the result awesome, but it shows that anything's possible if you put your mind to it. The resulting spoof ad and the build video have lit up the YouTubes, and frankly, I am so happy that it did. Well deserved, Simone, and the rest of your team. And on that note, I'm going to say goodbye for the week. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Tell your friends about the show, and if you've got feedback, then send it our way. We love hearing from you. Make sure as well that you hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. And while you're at it, why not switch to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company? It's super easy to make the change and you'll be helping New Zealand towards a zero emission future. Thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time.